you're trying to be everyone for everybody, then you're going to have a real hard time to find clients, good clients, and create a coherent portfolio. So in this video, I'm going to share why I think that you should niche down on a specific type of clients and how to think about choosing your own niche. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another segment of Business Time where I share some of my perspective and learnings from freelancing for over 15 years as a designer. So what I want to talk about today is finding a niche and by finding a niche and making a decision to work with a specific type of niche, I mean that you only help specific type of clients and you actually say no to every project or every client who is not fit that specific criteria or a specific industry. Now, I think that a lot of um, designers ask me, how do I find clients? But by not being very specific about what type of clients do they want to work with, will they bring most value to, it makes their their search for clients very unfocused and, and their portfolio is very unfocused because they show a lot of different types of work for different types of clients. And so when a specific client comes to, to check their portfolio, they don't know if this is the right person for them. Now, me specifically, my niche or the specific type of audience that clients that I work with is early stage startups and even more specific than that B2B startups. So if this is not a startup, if you're a, a law firm, you're probably not a good fit for me. If you're a startup, but you're not early stage startup, if you're a late stage startup, you're probably not a good fit for me. And even the latest one, I said B2B, if you're a B2C, uh, a business to consumer startup, might not be a good niche because most of my value is for B2B startups in their early stage. I can go in deep and explain why I do this, but this is not what I want to focus on in this video. What I want to focus is, is how you should think about finding um, your niche. And maybe I will explain why I chose mine. So let me explain some of the criteria that I think about when I'm thinking about my niche and maybe you should consider as well. So the first is you really need to be interested and love what that specific niche does. Now, me personally, I'm a very, I would say technical person. I love tech. I love trying on new product. I love solving big, um, I would say complex problems. And so working with startups in the early stage where they, they're not sure about their brand, they're not sure about their product, they're not sure about how to communicate what they do. Um, and what they're doing is very, very complex. I love, I'm really passionate about trying to solve these things. So I'm really engaged in trying to help them. And obviously, you know, if I would try to help, let's say again, lawyers, and I'm not really passionate about the law, um, I would find those clients. I wouldn't want to develop a relationship with them because I can't really listen to them because I get bored out of listening to them, listening to their problems, listening to their issues. And I can't really be a good, you know, help a good service provider when you're actually bored with what your client is talking about. So obviously each of us has different interests. You might be interested in food, travel, hospitality, law, accounting. Everybody has their own interests. And so I encourage you to find something which you're passionate about. Otherwise you won't be able to really be interested in helping your client's problems. That's the first thing. The second thing, which is also very, very important is you need to make sure that the niche that you're choosing, you know, they have money and most specifically they have the budget to pay you. If you want to charge high prices for your work, you got to make sure that you're working with clients who can afford that. So I might also tell you that I'm passionate about indie music, but I know that most indie musicians um, don't have a budget like, you know, $30,000 um, if they don't have a, a major record label to build their website. And so I would probably not focus on that, even though I'm passionate about this, that's not where I'm going to go business wise because they can't afford me. And as I said in a previous video, I think that money can be found in every probably industry around the world where whether it is music, restaurants, food, hospitality, or tech, it's not that all the money is in tech. Um, and, and even in startups, some of them don't have much budget. So I'm very focused on the, the early stage startup after they've raised some amount of money to make sure that they have it. So again, and if you want to, if you're very passionate about indie musician, you might want to work with indie musician only after they have been working with a label and have certain kind of budgets. So again, you find what you, what you're interested in, and then you make sure that that interest can afford what you're looking for. Now, the third thing, which, um, I think that is 
pretty obvious, but maybe you're not thinking about this, is can you actually help them do the skills that you're currently own in this specific moment in time can solve their problems. Because if I would want to help, let's say I'm very passionate about helping doctors, and let's say that I've found a segment that has, you know, a lot of money in it, dentists or whatnot, and now I want to help them, but actually what they need specifically, let's say in their, and I'm just making this up, but just so you can understand this example, let's say that what they specifically need is somebody who can, you know, um, build uh, intricate animations for you know how they're doing their their teeth service whatever I'm just making this up and I'm not really good with animations and I'm not interested in learning how to do animations and so I might not be a good fit to solve their problems again this was a very made up scenario but I just want to show you that you know Let's take my example again. So um, one of the core things that I enjoy doing is developing a lot of skills, which I call full stack you know, designers. So I love making videos, creating content, writing, doing copywriting, um, doing branding, doing product design. And in, in my specific niche and segment, that skill is very, very valuable because early stage startups don't have many resources to work with different like 10 different um you know vendors so they want to focus on one who can help them solve all their problems in that specific case that works well for me so just make sure that you are actually able to solve the problem for your niche um, the last thing that i think would be very very helpful is do you have some kind of a leverage or advantage in that niche if you are um, again, if you have a certain connection, if you know somebody who is the top, very famous in that niche, if you have a skill that is very, very necessary in that skill, that's going to give you leverage. And by leverage, I mean some kind of a competitive advantage um, that means that if you're trying to focus on that niche and somebody else is trying to focus on that niche, you have some advantage and you have more chances of winning the clients. Now, I think that if you do this, if you're very focused on working with your niche, if you've selected a good niche and you're, you're spending years building traction within that niche, it's, it will create some kind of a positive spiral because all of your portfolio will be with relevant work to your clients. You'll have connections and build relationship within that niche and that will make finding clients very or much much easier so help, hope this was helpful for you and uh, I'll see you in the next video let me know in the comment what is your niche and if you think that you found a good niche talk to you soon